What are you doing? <laughs> you know what you're doing here? You need to make sure it's shut inside. <laughs> so first time doing the ablutions and it's Sosha's job. She's the one that wanted the toilet, so her problem. But something that goes in there. Here, give me them. Do you know what you're doing? <laughs> I'll probably skip this bit because you don't want to see. It's only number ones, guys. Yeah, it's a, no, a strictly no number two's toilet. I've been told that from Sosh. Yeah, skip this bit. <laughs> Doesn't know what I'm doing. How did you go? Not great. <laughs> I'm sure I'll get used to it. I swear it's meant to be like a two minute job. Well, the more you do it, the quicker it's going to go. The more wheeze you do. Welcome to another video, and we are starting this one skipping Perth. We skipped Perth already. Yeah. We are off the coast as well. Um, Pinjara. We're in Pinjara. We, yeah, skipped Perth, went into Mandra, and looked at the weather forecast for the next couple of days, and it's pretty average along the coast. Yeah. So we've come inland, and we've got a little plan. And I guess on this video, we're going to be going inland a bit more. Yep to dwelling up. dwelling up, have a little look around there and then hopefully find a free camp tonight um, somewhere around Waruna. Yes. Waruna, I think I it's called. I <laughs> Plenty of free camps down that way and yeah, hopefully we just find a nice little spot there. But no plans again. We're just going to cruise along and see what we see. Um, Pinjarra so far. We've only been here a night. It's been bloody good. It's rained on and off the whole time though. Yeah. Uh, free camp. Free water, beautiful places like this, like this as well. Beautiful scenery. Anyway, let's get on with it, eh? Let's go. See what we can see in Pinjara on the way out, and then head towards dwelling up. Dwelling up. Yeah. See what we see along there. So this is dwelling up and everything that we want to do is closed. Yep, there is a little was it like a, a rainforest train? Yeah. Hotham train or something? Hotham Valley Rail, that's it. Says it on the sign over there. It is closed, only on open on weekends, which is a bit of a bugger. But um we're just and gonna around a Monday in September the Queen's birthday. <laughs> so we're just gonna find the information centre. Yeah. Um see what we can see but then probably head out into lane pool forest trail or something like that and then just have a look around the forest but we'll see what we can see in this information center
So they've got this big screen here that's got all the information about, I guess, the, the Mack truck here and the fire, I'm seeing all these pictures from. But 1961, a devastating dwelling up bushfire. Completely destroyed these four towns. Never to be rebuilt. All caused by lightning strikes as well. So fully operational and fully rebuilt by Parks and Wildlife. So really interesting little, I guess, information centre and a lot of the history here of dwelling up, the fire, the, oh, and the for forestry as well. That's a big thing about this little area is forestry. Um, <laughs> we don't really get to see it as this is the train that's not open. Hotham Valley Railway. Is this the train they get on? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. No. That's what it is, but apparently the train goes through all the forest area, shows you all everything from forestry, and there's even a dinner one, isn't there? Yeah. You know how no, much? I no, I don't. Oh. Well, we don't get to do that, spewing. I'll have to get back here one day for that one. But let's keep on going, eh? Yep. So our last little stop in Lane Pool Reserve is Dwa Lin Jarp. Yeah. You gonna have a try? We just leave it in there. <laughs> the... We'll leave it below. I think it's Dwa Lin Jarp. Um, pool? Dwa Lin Jarp Pool? Whatever it is, but this is the area, Dwa Lin Jarp. And nice little swimming hole, couple little entries. Um, another big main one over there and some swings. Wake up. <laughs> and this is, I think it's the end point for all these guys, all the kids coming down in canoes. Some rapids there. I don't know if they're gonna go down them. But Surely not. It'd be pretty funny to see them go down that if they do. 
but we're definitely not going for a swim. It's 15 degrees in the car, or outside the car. Probably about three degrees in that water there. But an awesome little spot. We'll see if we can see these rapids. So we didn't get to see the kids go down the rapids. We didn't um, go. Nah, we went over there, buggers. But we found out what they're fishing for as well. Rainbow trout. Um, no idea about rainbow trout. Probably something to look at where we're staying tonight. But the weather is turning again, isn't it? Yes, it's about to rain. It's about to rain. We've got to race back to the car. And apparently it might hail as well. So that's us done. We'll get to camp rather early today. Set up hopefully before the rain sets right in. Let's do it. And you can camp here as well, can't you? $11 per person. Person per night. Per night. Yep, room for caravans, camper trailers, tents. I'm not sure. Yep, well, camping, that's what it is. Yeah, there are tent sites, Yep. remember. And plenty of walking trails as well. Um, all bitumen roads, pretty much up until the last two we turned around yes righto let's go that is wherever we are done lane lane pool, pool reserve. lane pool reserve done um if it was a bit warmer as well we probably would have gone for a swim but this is why we're saving the coastal road <laughs> till later yep. because we want to go for swims yep righto This is us for the night. This is Lake Moyen up. Drake's Brook Weir. Uh, about 10 minutes out of Wauruna. And a bloody great little spot, this one. A little bit windy, a bit nippy. But we have got a beach site. We'll have a little look around here because there's a good little park, this one. Good little free camp. Especially when you get a site here. Or that one there. I think they've got the prime, prime site down there. So free all year round, uh, maximum 24 hours in within five nights and fully self-contained and a maximum of five RVs permitted at one time. Plenty of room, just the two of us for tonight, us, this one. And the toilet's right up the back there. These guys have definitely got the the pick of the spots. So constructed in 1932 by locals using shovels, pick wheelbarrows and a small bulldozer. The main purpose of supplying water to livestock and crops. Today the weir has a capacity of 2,290 megalitres, a catchment area of 5,900 hectares. Used for recreational swimming, non-motorised vessels and fishing. Home to rainbow trout, redfin, perch and marron. Oh, so there's a little walking trail as well noisy scrub bird trail which i did see on that last time or just at um the noisy scrub bird which i believe was extinct and then was found back around this area uh, interesting little read but 500 meter return trail follow this trail to view the noisy scrub bird memorial so i might grab social and we'll do that in the morning um it's just too cold to do it tonight and so she's got dinner on so 
That'd be a cool little walk in the morning. But anyway. Back to the van, back to the warmth. See what Sosa's cooking up for dinner. What's cooking? Good looking? Spag bowl, but not spaghetti, penny pasta, because <laughs> I don't like spaghetti. <laughs> Fair enough. We are cooking inside because it's freezing cold. It's something like 10, 11 degrees. I saw on the car. Um, I still can't go wrong with those views. And I think we're gonna have to get used to cooking inside, aren't we, Dania? No, yeah. Yep, it's cold weather. Anyway, that's probably going to do us for today. We'll um, pick this up in the morning. We'll do that walk. Yeah, if the, if the weather's okay in the morning, there's a little 500 metre walk. Yep. We'll get that done. And then... I check the weather for the morning, it's going to be 7. Oh! <laughs> Electric blankets then today, tonight. Mm -hmm. But righto, we'll pick this up in the morning. Night, night. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> all the top of our caravan off now. It's gonna pull. <laughs> right, it's the next morning and um, another wet one. Wet morning. Wet Beautiful night sleep, but yeah wet. Wet and windy. Um, and now having we are having problems with the caravan as well, battery levels. Um, an idiot oh, oh, stupid me, um, I didn't realise that the A vans don't have a DC DC charger. So they don't charge as you're driving, it's all purely off solar. Um, which we've been using a lot of power. Air frying, toaster, microwave, kettle. Hair dryer. Yeah, hair dryer. So we're down to about 50% out of 286 amp lithium. Um, I don't know, yesterday we raced into J car, the only thing open on a Sunday, and picked up a DC DC. Uh, so hopefully that's going to fix our problem, sort our problem, because we're not getting any solar at all the last couple of days. But anyway. That'll be over the next couple of episodes. We'll keep you updated on that. We thought we'd do this little scrub, noisy scrub bird trail before we leave this little camp. Beautiful little free camp, isn't it? Mm, it'd be so nice if it was. Especially with sunny. little. Yeah, he's been following me all morning. Showing off. It is showing off, yeah. As soon as I go to take a picture, everything. Oh yeah, use my new phone. He ran, look. Oh. <laughs> Be like that. Righto, let's do this trail <laughs> and see if we can catch him on the way back. Here you go. Noisy scrub bird trail. So a little bit of information on the dam there. But we do need to keep our eyes peeled for the noisy scrub bird. It's apparently a little brown bird. Only found, well it was extinct and then they found it in this area again. In the 60s I believe. But it's going to be pretty hard to find one of them. Everything's brown and green. Yeah. Camouflaged. Yep.
So at the end of the trail, I've got this nice plaque saying the first known specimen of West Australians, I guess the scrub, noisy scrub bird, 1842. And it was re-released in 1997, considered extinct for 72 years. A fitting tribute to John Gilbert's discovery of the species 155 years earlier. So nice little plaque, information, and a good little trail, but we couldn't see them. They are only small as well. Um, plenty of those parrots, lorikeets, whatever they are. Don't ask me. <laughs> the the um, beautiful coloured green. Yeah, they're so crystal. Yeah, loads of them. And a good little walk. Anyway, that's us done here at, I've forgotten the lake's name now. Hey. <laughs> but anyway, we're done. Let's um, get in the van. The van's all packed up. We're heading into Harvey, aren't we, to see the yeah. big orange. orange. Big orange. Alright, let's go. So our last stop is Harvey River Estate yes. uh, to see the Big Orange, which is a gold coin, gold coin donation, which goes to the telephone. Yeah, good idea. Yep, really good idea. So I think they do wine tasting as well. Two dollars a tasting. Yep, and five dollars a glass. But I don't think we're going to be doing that. I think it's a little bit early. <laughs> Breakfast. <laughs> but let's get up there. So I did see as well because of farm biosecurity. That's why they got these fences up here and no picking of the fruit. So keep your hands in. Oranges are expensive. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my legs. Power van's still there. God, that's a walk up those stairs. Big orange, isn't it? <laughs> Beautiful views as well, and I'm not too sure if these oranges are for Harvey Fresh. Uh, I don't know. Because the building right next door, that way, is Harvey Fresh orange juice, or Harvey Fresh juices, and there's no fences or anything, so. Yeah, not too sure if they're Harvey Fresh oranges or the, what is it, Harvey Estate? Harvey Estate. Does wine have orange in the, this many oranges? <laughs> I'd say it'd be for the juices, right? Yeah, I think so. But they would do all, all sorts of stuff in there, in that little shop. So, interesting views and interesting pictures as well, showing the history of, I'm guessing, this area, as there's got Cooperative Farmers Limited, different stores there, and just the farming in general. So a cool little stop and definitely worth a gold coin donation to Telethon. Um, but that's going to do us. Let's go to the outside, down the bottom. Yes. Try and get some footage of the outside. The sun's finally coming up for us. That's a big orange. That 
is the big orange. <laughs> Righto, that is going to do us for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, a bit of a miserable weather episode, but hopefully it's clearing up, starting to clear up. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Hopefully the batteries start recharging a bit more. Hopefully the weather clears up, but we are going into Bunbury. Yeah. For the next two days, two nights. Two nights and going to do like trips in and out. Yep. We're going to leave the caravan there. There's 48 hours stopping, so happy, happy days. Happy days. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye. Morning. Welcome. It's not morning for them. <laughs> Evening. <laughs> Quack. Dwalindra. What's this place called? Where we are? Long Pool Lane? No. I don't know. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ornithologist. Ornithologist. Which is a gold coin, gold coin donation. Right, that is going to do us for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, what do we do? <laughs> Can't remember. We'll just won't say that. Uh, forest.